Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Will Bergkamp, and we'll be talking about the work he does serving as both the managing director and publisher for Fortress Press. Will, thanks for being a part of this episode of Fortress Press Live. Thank you very much. Take a few minutes and give us some insight. What does a publisher and managing director actually do? I've come to realize that managing director is a title that you see far more often in the UK and in, uh, in those contexts. But in fact, it means that uh, we have a largely consolidated business. The editors at Fortress Press report to me, but so does the production team, the sales team, and the marketing team. And what's very productive and effective about that is that we can move very quickly. We can keep uh, the team working on uh, projects in, in uh, quick succession, and uh, we're able to do far more than we were in a previous configuration where our uh, leadership was a bit more, uh, bit more separated. All right. Well, thank you for that overview of what you do on a daily basis. Give us a little bit of your background. Uh, what were you doing before you came to Fortress Press? One of the things about my background that I've realized is that it reflects um, unintentionally, I think, the post-denominational world that we all have come to inhabit. I grew up in Mennonite uh, communities of Kansas on the plains and through a lengthy sojourn ended up at Moody Bible Institute in the uh, early to mid, mid-90s. Grew up there, grew up both in my faith and in, the, in, the, in my uh, sense of it as an urban person. Became Lutheran actually under the auspices of the Missouri Synod and then ended up finally in an ELCA seminary. And so all of these moves give me an interest in and a sympathy for these varied expressions of American Christianity. And um, it's deeply shaped the way that I, uh, the way that I work at, at Fortress. Professionally, I thought for a long time I would be a teacher, and my desire was to uh, teach church history. But I realized that the job trends were, were not probably in my favor, and so I ended up working at a bookstore, which quickly became working for a chain of bookstores, moved to Augsburg Fortress in uh, the uh, mid-2000s, and ended up then uh, working for Fortress in the sales and marketing capacity a few years ago. Sounds like you made a transition then from working in bookstores to moving towards what you're doing now. What were some of the things that appealed to you and in a sense uh, drew you into your current role at Fortress? I've often said that I do what I do because, because I was asked to. Fortress actually did more of the drawing maybe than I did the, uh, did the pursuing. Fortress books intersected with, with my life long before I had any idea that I would be involved with the press, let alone leading it. I still remember the first Fortress book that I discovered in the library at Moody Bible Institute. It was an old volume, uh, Readings in Christian Humanism. And the title took me back and uh, uh, I checked it out and really devoured it. Beyond that, it was Brevard Childs in Bible classes, uh, biblical theology courses. And then, of course, moving to an ELCA seminary in Chicago, the course books were dominated by, by Fortress Press titles. And so the things that, that really drew me to Fortress as I started to work there was the diversity and the background, the, the deep influence that this press has uh, had on so many students and scholars of religion over the past 50 years. Now, with the kind of work you do, uh, I think you probably spend a lot of time with your head down uh, reading and thinking quite a bit. So I'd be curious to hear on a day-to-day basis, what are the things that give you passion and, and drive for the work you do? One of the messages that I took very, very clearly from my uh, predecessor, Michael West, was that Christianity and religion in a broader sense is, can be at least, part of the solution, not part of the problem. And we live in a world where there are so many different examples on a daily basis of uh, religion that is part of the problem, not part of the solution. And so I think the things that give me passion as I work through the days is the message of Fortress Press um, that's implicit in so many of its books that um, the Christian faith and the, uh, the considered, measured consideration of religion that Fortress brings can help people move forward in uh, solving so many of the problems and the issues that we face. Now, in meetings, we often talk about the big picture, the vision that we have here at Fortress, and, and we focus a lot on really what, what I think of as the three Ps, which is our people, our passion, and uh, the projects that we have going on. Talk to us about your vision for where you see that we're headed here at Fortress, and uh, tell us a few of the exciting things we have in the works. I really hope that Fortress can claim a space in the larger conversation. I mentioned earlier my background 
spanning the gap between Moody Bible Institute and ELCA seminaries and, and that, I really hope that we can build for Fortress a place that draws people together, draws these diverse traditions together um, into conversation, maybe not into agreement, but into conversation, and to form perhaps a new center in a very polarized world, using center as as a positive term, as a place where people um, learn and, and communicate in an effective way. I think that the people part of Fortress Press goes a long ways towards that. I do wish that people listening to the podcast would get a chance to uh, join us for meetings or for happy hours. It's a diverse group. It's a fun group. And they're very committed to moving this, uh, this message forward. So the people are, are a key part of that. Uh, they bring their passions every day. And I think that shows in the wide range of, of projects. Over the last three years, we have more than doubled the number of titles that we publish on, a, uh, on an annual basis, moving from around 50 titles to close to 120 a year. That's part of being a larger part of the, of the conversation. Those projects range from individual titles and monographs, as you know, to series and revisions of textbooks, new reference works like the Fortress Commentary on the Bible, and there's lots more projects in the works. I know there's always uh, projects in uh, various stages of completion. So thinking of a few of the projects that we've finished up recently or that, have, or that are going to be coming out in the near future, tell us about a few of those that you're particularly excited about. There's three that come to mind. Of course, the uh, push this fall at AAR and SBL will be around the Fortress Commentary on the Bible. It's been something that we've wanted to do for a long time. And over the last couple of years, we've been able to make that, uh, make that happen. It's a great editorial group. It's a great group of contributors. And we're really excited to bring it to market this fall in October of uh, 2014. A bit further out is the Annotated Luther. So on the history side of our program, we're getting ready for the beginning of a lot of 500-year anniversaries of the Reformation. These are important events. They start in 2017. And so the Annotated Luther will be a six-volume project, two volumes next year in 15 and forward from there, that will bring Martin Luther's writings to life in our day. So an annotation apparatus that will bring historical, philosophical points to bear on the text. I think it will really help students engage these primary sources in a way that's meaningful and not mystifying. And then lastly, the first of the Foundations for Learning volumes come out this fall, the first of a series that we hope goes for quite some time. Foundations for Learning is based on the uh, understanding that all of us can do a better job getting prepped for foundational courses, particularly those who plan to go into full-time ministry of, of whatever type. And so these books will help students orient themselves to the courses that they will take, be it church history or Bible or theology. And they'll help with understanding and framing that experience too. I think of Eric Barreto's book that just came out a few months ago called Reading Theologically. Really interesting chapter sections that will help students get oriented to what they'll experience in seminary. Well, in addition to book projects, we always have a number of uh, different marketing initiatives and and things that we're doing behind the scenes really to connect with our our authors and our books with uh, the people that read our books. So Talk to us about a few of the projects that we have going on right now. Well, if you're listening to this podcast, you know of the one that's first and foremost on my mind. The uh, podcast is an effort to just engage with readers and audiences in a new way. I enjoy listening to a range of podcasts on the commute home most evenings. And so with Sean's expertise here, it was an opportunity to do that for Fortress Press. And so whether it's author interviews or a chance to get to know the Fortress team and the work that they do, or uh, interviews or various different uh, aspects of events, it's uh, something that we're very excited about. The other development is the rebuild of our website. It doesn't sound like that exciting of a project, but in fact, websites are hugely important for, for publishers. And we've just uh, received the approval to begin work on a complete rebuild of our website. And there again, I think it will put more resources in the hands of readers, professors, and students as we put together new product pages, uh, new series pages, and generally make the entire experience of learning about Fortress projects even easier and more effective. Will, thanks for helping us to get to know you a little bit better today and for being a part of this episode of Fortress Press Live. Thank you very much. Thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Will Bergkamp. 
To view the show notes for this episode or to leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 007. Fortress Press Live is distributed via iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube. So be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast distribution network. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.